Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Holistic Hearts. Again, I am going to let you in on a mom's in the middle. Amazing talk. I just could not wait to get this episode out because it was just so precious to hear other moms, other women who are struggling with chronic issues, other women that, you know, day to day, there is um, a battle and there is a leaning into and a learning to be kind to ourselves. This conversation with these women really blessed me. I, I really use that word blessed lightly because I can know it can feel very Christian-y, but it really did move me. I went to bed that night after that conversation and just felt seen and I felt heard and I felt not alone. So if you are struggling with something chronic or you are, even if it's, you know, you feel like you are alone in whatever struggle, whether it's chronic pain, autoimmune, um, migraines, uh, maybe it's even special needs with your kids or, um, depression or anxiety. I encourage you to listen in to today's episode of moms in the middle. It's so, uh, encouraging. So, um, I, yeah, I, I even talked to a friend of mine who listened to the YouTube version when it came out and she said, that she has never felt so, um, heard and she was not alone in the struggle. She thought she was the only one who suffered in, in a capacity that no one else could understand. And to me, our job is done. (laughs) If you can take away something from this time, I just want you to know you are not alone There are so many people suffering and there are so many people walking through hardships. And I just want to say, I see you and I want you to know you are not alone. If you are wanting to find community, I really encourage you to find either Katie Lynn, who's hosting this week on Moms in the Middle, her group, or if you would like to join my group on Facebook, it's Mind, Body, Spirit, Holistic Faith for Moms. And I would love to have you there. Just reach out. Please contact us. Contact me in the DMs on social media. Um, you can email me via the show notes and or on my website, which is posted below in the show notes. I just want you to know that you are seen. This is a longer episode, about 40 minutes. So tuck in here and get comfortable. But just know that you are surrounded by women who are are going through similar processes, processes, <laughs> and that you are not alone. Before we start our show, I want to just share with you a little about my coaching. When I was a young mom with four young little whippersnappers, including twins, needing all the things that they needed in life, At the end of the day, I would absolutely collapse, exhausted and drained into my bed. My husband would reach for me and rub my back and try to connect. And though I loved him dearly, my whole being would be so weary and quietly thinking, oh, please don't ask for anything. Why? Because my cup was so beyond empty. I didn't even know how to say no to other things in order to care for myself. And in my one-on-one coaching, we explore what it means for your cup to be filled, not just self-care as the world considers self-care, but for you, we discuss how to hold space in your own heart throughout the day in the midst of motherhood so that you can pour from a filled cup. Join me today, sign up for a free session, the link's below. Looking forward to talking to you. Hey everyone. Hi, welcome to another Moms in the Middle Talk. This is going to be a good one. We are so excited to meet you here today. We're going to be talking about how to thrive while living with chronic physical pain. And I know a couple of the mamas here inside of the Moms in the Middle deal with this on a daily basis. And so I'm super excited to glean some wisdom from them and hear from their perspective um, how they do live a thriving life amidst this chronic physical pain. So before we jump in and get started though, why don't you girls share who you are and how you add value to the world? 
Kristen, let's start with you. Oh, that's a great question. How do you add value? I hope I add value by uh, bringing people to know Jesus face to face and um, let them know that he's actually way better than we think. And um, yeah, and I do that through my podcast, Holistic Hearts, and also through a podcast management business and um, helping other people get their podcasts out and their stories out. I love that. If you've ever, if you're watching or listening and you've ever wanted to start a podcast of your own, Kristen is your girl. She's your go-to girl. Thank you. She's my girl. I like just <laughs> Katie May. Okay. Does the, say that. Yes. does the world know yet? Does the world officially know? No, but I was okay. trying to okay. steal Kristen's thunder. Okay. I was saying how awesome Kristen was. <laughs> okay. Kristen's but awesome. And we'll, we'll share your news for a later date. Yes. So why don't you introduce yourself though, Katie May? Oh yes. I am Katie May. Uh, I am uh, the CEO and founder of Katie May Coaching and the Marriage Empowered Free Facebook Community. And I help women transform their marriages into the relationships they've always wanted. Love it. Katie's your go-to marriage girl. And Ashley, what's up, girl? Tell us who hey, you are. Hey, what's up? Uh, I am the host of the So She Grows podcast, the resident hype mom on TikTok and all the places. I love TikTok, y'all. Um, and basically just to help women grow themselves so that way they're living the fullest life possible after having kids while juggling life and all the things um, to where you have a spicy marriage, you feel good about yourself and you're not lost in the chaos that is motherhood. So, yeah. I love it. Okay. And admittedly, I love TikTok too. <laughs> <laughs> it's addicting, right? Like it's, y- y- it is, but it's so fun. I was very hesitant to join forever and ever. I finally joined. And then I figured out like, it's a fun place to be creative. Like it's a fun yes. place to not only consume, mm-hmm. but to produce and create content. So I'm mm-hmm. loving it over there. So yeah, come join us all on TikTok. It's, it's, the, <laughs> it's the fun place to hang out, right? With the various moms moms in the mm-hmm. middle. So awesome. All right. Well, most of you know me, I'm Katie Lynn Hedrick. I am a certified life coach for growth minded mamas. I help women grow in wisdom, walk in freedom and live lives that are intentionally full of joy by helping women design their life, not just float along and live their life by default. Mm-hmm. So today let's just dive on in today. We are talking about again, how to thrive while living with chronic physical pain. And I I've got to be honest and upfront here. I personally do not have chronic physical pain. However, I definitely have walked through some experiences and some bouts with extreme physical pain. Um, specifically several years back, I actually had a lymph node removed from my neck and, um, it left me with a temporary paralysis of my tongue. Like one side of my tongue, I was oh not God. able, I was not able to control. <laughs> and so it was really weird and really wild, really emotional. Um, I, my speech was very unclear and no one knew if the nerves would ever be restored. If I would ever speak mm-hmm. clearly again, eating was really hard and really weird because only, you know, my tongue was only working on half <laughs> on one side. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was just a really like, wild time, very, um, very emotionally trying and very physically painful. I, it was kind of wild how the story turned out. I actually went live on Facebook and I had no idea what was to come, but I declared, um, healing. I'm like, I'm going to be completely physically healed in Jesus name. And I put it out on Facebook and very shortly after just days after I started feeling tingles in my tongue and within weeks, it was completely restored. So the thing was, I knew that one day somehow, whether it was here on earth or in heaven, I knew that I was going to be physically healed. And so I decided just to put it out there. I'm going to be healed because I knew one way or another, I was going to be healed. And the Lord chose to heal me this side of heaven. And I'm very, very grateful for that. He's also shown me over and over and over again, that our physical bodies are just shells. And I keep Mm -hmm. telling myself that as family members walk through things, as my kids walk through things with our body, as we walk through the aging process, the gray hairs and our, you know, our sight getting less, less (laughs) what it used to be. Like I'm majorly dealing with that right now. I'm like our bodies, you know, our scars, our bruises, our stretch marks, our bodies are just a shell. And what really, really matters is our heart, our spirit, right. And where we're at with the Lord. And so I'm constantly reminding myself of that, but that being said, 
it's not always a lot of fun to live with physical pain, especially I can only imagine if you're dealing with chronic physical pain. So I actually want to turn it over to you girls to kind of share your stories, your backstory, what type of physical pain that you have dealt with or what chronic physical pain you're currently living with. Just whoever wants to jump on in and kind of share where you're at with that. Oh. It's always like, who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, I, I just want to say, I think the main point of this whole conversation is that you're not alone. Yeah. Whether it's pain, whether it's something else health wise, whether it's a chronic issue that you deal with, everybody is walking through something that is requiring us to lean in and, mm -hmm. and really dig deep and whether that's now or later, or it's with our children or it's with our husbands or, um, I don't know. I just want to like put that out there that you're not alone uh, at all. Um, and I guess I'll, I'll share mine. I don't have physical pain, um, but I have a chronic issue where it is a bizarre autoimmune, um, issue that comes every cycle a week before my period starts. It's going to get real ladies a week before my, <laughs> my period starts. Always. Uh, yeah, TMI here, right? <laughs> about, just bring it. Oh, it's the good stuff. Let's go there. It bring is it. the good stuff. So, um, yeah. So I get a rash on my feet every month for it's about seven days. And, um, I, it, prevents me from sleeping. It feels like ants are crawling underneath my feet. Um, like the itchiness is, it literally makes me insane. Um, <clears throat> and like my kids will catch me like itching my feet and they'll be like, mom, gross. And I'm like, I can't help it. <laughs> it just, it's just so bad. And it's worse at night. So then there's like lack of sleep and, um, just feeling frustrated. Um, and many, many, many doctors and naturopaths and functional medicine and holistic approach and all of those things, um, it for 10 years. So it started when I was pregnant with my twins, which is, well, actually it was 11 years ago. Um, and so it has been non nonstop every cycle. So that has been my journey of chronic issue or opportunity to lean in and ask like how, if this never changes, how, how do I sit with that? How do I continue? And how do I not get frustrated? How do I handle the prayers that everybody has prayed over me? And it hasn't healed this side of heaven and deal with that disappointment, all of those questions. But I feel like more than anything else, it's really made me see that, um, I am a very strong person and there are places in me that I have to surrender and be like, I, I cannot do it all because I'm, mm -hmm. I am struggling. Um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's my story <laughs> so far. I think you, you hit the nail on the head, Kristen, just knowing that we're not alone. That's yeah. everything. And I think that's the, the most, the most awesome thing that moms in the middle brings to the table is that we bring our, bring and show our real life struggles. It's relatable and people need to hear that. And it's like this giant, like virtual group hug, <laughs> just to know that, that they're not alone, that you're not alone. I'm not alone. We're not alone. And you listening, watching, tuning in, you are not alone. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think too, to also just put on top of that is that no matter your, your pain is not too small, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. The comparison factor can, I mean, it's, if it is actually impacting your life, it doesn't mean that like you shouldn't take active like action to try to repair or seek a, seek a help for that, that pain that's impacting your life. Right. Just because somebody else's pain is bigger. I feel like that, <laughs> that I hear that a lot, like, oh, it's not a real issue. Right. It's not like really, but yeah, like holy crap ants on your feet like that would you're losing sleep like there's all kinds of stuff you know what I mean like and my um to share my story too um I was uh so I have endometriosis um and uh that's also cycle related I, I mean pain 
it's painful. I don't know if you guys know what it is, but it's um, basically uh, the uterine tissue gets on the outside mm -hmm. and then causes a bunch of problems and pain. Uh, so they had to go in like laparoscopically um, and Ugh. remove the scar tissue and stuff like that. That's actually funny how a uh, part of our journey of getting pregnant, but <laughs> <laughs> so I've uh, experienced a lot of a lot of pain to the point of like um yeah monthly like we're talking period cramps to me like vomiting mm -hmm. passing out from the pain like just Advil all day long um I have celiacs so autoimmune and I was like Kristen you do too right yeah I was like also Kristen um, so that, uh, that weighs heavily on my energy if I'm not, um, taking care of myself, eating right and mood, very much mood. Oh, you guys notice I itch my head a lot. If you watch any of the recordings, I have a roaring case of psoriasis <laughs> on the back <laughs> of my neck, also celiac related, like it's all the skin stuff. So, um, I mean, that, that's the, the list. I was, di I was diagnosed um, when my husband and I were married. I was having extreme pain. I uh, felt like I had like the UTI from hell and no one could figure out why. Um, so I went through like colonoscopies. I went through like, I didn't have any infections. They ruled all that stuff out. I went through test after test after test and it was absolutely excruciating. It hurt when I had sex or every time I went to the bathroom, speaking of TMI, we just lay it, laying it out. Um, but it was the most frustrating thing to not have answers. It weighed so heavily on me. Like it just, it truly is so easy to like, have something that is weighing on you to the point of like, you have no idea what's wrong with you. Like when they mm. quote unquote diagnosed me, cause I still think it was wrong. Uh, but when they did, I just cried. Cause like, Oh my God, there's like an answer. There's like a mm. fix. I can actually like pursue treatment. They diagnosed me with interstitial cystitis, which is a really fancy word for painful bl bladder syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a thing? Did you guys just make up a really like fancy word? Oh um, and, and the thing like that, that also, um, I'm retrospectively so incredibly happy that I had to go through that because it, edu it forced me to educate myself so much about mm -hmm. our medical system and community. And they gave me some pills and it worked for a very short amount of time. I was told I couldn't drink coffee. I couldn't drink alcohol. I couldn't have any spices. Um, like basically just eat the most bland crap the rest of my life. And then with these pills, they would help. And every now and then it did. I was told I'd be at high risk pregnancy, like all of this stuff. And then I finally, um, said, uh, to heck with this. I'm going to try to find my own, my own method. Cause they clearly don't know any, like they gave me these pills and I was like, why does this work? Well, we really don't know. We just know that they do. And I was like, cool. So you really like you, you, you said names, you've given me a pill and now like, so really none of this makes any sense to me. And I just dove down my own rabbit hole of research. And I started like plotting, like, all these people who said they were diagnosed with this and then were quote unquote cured. And I mapped it all back to like an antifungal. Mm -hmm. And so I went on like, yeah, I went on. And, and of course my doctor said this was ridiculous, but I went on the candidas diet and I flushed and cleansed my system. And I had been totally symptom-free for like over five years. Wow. Oh my gosh. Okay. That's but that's wild. Yeah. But, but to be in that pain, not knowing what's going on, not like not knowing if you're, you're ever going to like, I mean, I, to not enjoy sex with my husband because I was in that much pain, like that sucks, like very mm -hmm. much so. So yes. I feel like there's different, there's several phases of like this chronic pain issue it's like the beginning of is like you're searching tirelessly and that takes so much energy and you feel yeah. so isolated you feel exhausted especially uh like for many of you guys like you guys and then me myself uh we it seems like we all went to several different places several several different doctors probably carting kids I remember like crying because I was going to a different doctor yet again for them to tell me make me feel like 
I was losing my mind and with no solution. And it's, it's hard, right? Like you have little kids and they're tired, they're cranky and you're in the waiting room and you're trying to get from here to there. Um, and then there's the other phase of like, you know, that daily, like that, that thing that you're dealing with daily that's preventing you from living a normal lifestyle day to day. And no matter, like you guys said, how big or small, if it's impacting your day in some way, like it's like something chiseling on you every single day, like breaking you down. And, and I think that's like the biggest thing that I want people to walk away with when they listen to this is like, the, it's more than just physical because it, the physical impacts yeah. the mental because it's wearing down on you Absolutely. every day. And I, and I think that that was my biggest struggle was where was I trying to look for men mental strength and how was I going to continue? Um, and where was I going to continue leaning? And like, it can take you down a dark path if you're not finding the right places to look and find that solace and that help and that foundation um, because otherwise, like, man, I mean, even when, even if it's not chronic pain, like even when you pull a muscle and you're like leg, you can't walk on it. Right. Like you don't realize how huge your body has a daily impact on. And then when, when it's out, when it's not working right, you're like, oh my gosh, like, you know, what was I thinking? I wish I took care of my body better. It's, and it's in the way and you're frustrated and it's very emotional, very mental. Um, and so, yeah, like with, like, I don't know how to get through it other than like a strong firm foundation and turning to God and being like okay God like because otherwise like you're just like you don't have anything to hang on to really like um and I think that I think that's that's the worst part of it all you brought up such a great point Ashley and actually I let's go there next let's talk about mindset and how important our mindset is in this journey and also how faith can play a role in helping us thrive. Yeah. I just to piggyback off of my experience I, and to Ashley's point too, was like, it is so much more than just this one pain. There's like the fear, the anxiety, the, am I ever going to feel normal? Like all those rabbit holes your head can just take and um and energy right like you're again like some of this is like losing sleep or not able to sit mm. at my desk long enough like all of these things and um I think just like to Ashley's point even was just um if this really is my reality what can I do about it right like mm. any circumstance like if this really is what I am facing and what I'm dealing with like I had my pity party moments where I was like, you know, feeling really sorry for myself and being like, this sucks. I can't have the food I want. I can't drink coffee. Like, are you kidding me? Right. Like boohoo. And then, <laughs> but, but, and, so, and I honestly, I think like, sometimes you got to have that, right. Like, and just be real with yourself, but like, don't live there. Like for me, it was just like, okay, mm -hmm. but how can I actually like, what do I still have? right? Like my gratitude mm. practice is my life. So it's like, I have to focus on, Hey, I got to stand up and walk today and go and still like, still be able to survive and still be able to take care of my kids today. Like really paying attention to what I did have, right. Instead of focusing on what I did not or focusing on what I was losing out as a result of, because yeah, did that suck? Yes, that's true. Right. It's not like toxic positivity, but like anything, we can always choose our response and we can always choose our focus. And if I was constantly focused on the negative and the pain, it really wasn't serving me anyways. It wasn't making it, wasn't making the pain go away. It wasn't making me any better. So then how can I still like focus on what I do have and the blessings that I do have that God has given me? And then also look for like, what is he teaching me in this? Like mm -hmm. making purpose from the pain was mm -hmm. definitely, a, was definitely helpful too. So good girl mm -hmm. preach for yeah. real. I think for real. I think for, I think for me, it's like, uh, you know, finding that confidence. Cause when you're going through these things, you feel like you're not being heard. You feel like you're making stuff up a lot of the times, uh, for most people dealing with chronic illness, it's like a series, like a long journey. And, um, you know, you start to think that it's you and nobody's listening to you or that maybe you're wrong. But then, you know, I go back to like, 
God being my, like having my back and giving me the confidence and being like, no, like just one more, like he, he gives you the strength to be like one more time, one more day. Like, and that, and that's kind of how it is sometimes is it's like when I, I have autoimmune disease as well, I have Hashimoto's. And um, when I was first diagnosed, like it was stomach pains. And it almost felt constantly every day, like I was going to throw up, but I never did. And I would have actually appreciated getting sick versus just feeling like that all day. And then I also had um, a leaky brain, which um, kind of gives you that fog brain. Like you don't, you're not clear, your thoughts aren't clear and you can't, it's like all jumbled and you can just feel it. And it's, it's a really weird feeling, but like, so it's, it's that day to be like, you know, just one more day. And that's how it is when you wake up. Sometimes you're like, okay, like I just gotta get through this day. And then you wake up again. You're like, I just gotta get through this day. Um, and also knowing that like, he's like, I gave you this in intuition for a reason, like keep pushing forward. Like you will find res refuge in me. You will find me there to have your back. Like just keep going. And, and then like, and you know, and, and trust that, instinct because I, I feel like instinct for me was huge and 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 like just his nudging me of like you got to get up girl like you got it you got to keep going and I see you and it's like feel it feel this way but let's keep going like feel you know cry but like let's keep going um and I've got you kind of you know like mentality um but but yeah like I, I mean honestly it's it's one of those things where it's just like if you're going through it sister right now like just one more, like, let's try one more time. Like, and that's all you have to keep hearing yourself saying or, or God and turning to him and him being like, just try one more time because when it is weighing on you every day, it is hard to get up. It is hard to function and take care of kiddos and you're tired and you feel like the worst mom, but then you just got to turn to his truths of like, but what are you really like? And how are you showing them how strong you are by showing up the best you can, even with all this going on? Like, it's, it's not for not right. Like it's all a part of his purpose. And so, man, there are days where you're just going to forget about that. And you're going to be like, whatever, Lord, like this sucks. And that's fine. And I think like Katie was saying, as long as you don't stay there, like you just got to get up and be like, okay, one more day. I like that. I, I will say too, one of the biggest lessons I learned, um, from this journey <laughs> of the rash and the, um, and having celiac as well, um, is I used to be a push it, like just fake it till you make it person. Mm -hmm. And I would say within the last five years that could not work anymore. Um, because when I pushed it, when I haven't had sleep or for like three nights in a row, it was like maybe a couple of hours combined. Um, and I was like, I gotta do this. I am the best mom ever. I'm <laughs> like, I gotta pump myself up. <laughs> I'm so miserable. Yeah. Like I was not being authentic with myself mm -hmm. at all. Um, and it really took, um, mindset and coaching and a health coach to be like, what are you doing? You are not being kind to yourself. Like you think that you need to go serve at your kid's school in the afternoon when you, in reality, you need to go to sleep, like go take the freaking mm -hmm. nap. <laughs> and like <laughs> Ashley, Ashley posted this on TikTok the other day. It was like, go take the nap. And, um, I love that because I really had to, my internal voice was very like, we are hardcore. I am a BA. I am a strong woman in Jesus. And like, yes, to all of those. And I can also be very kind to myself because I honestly believe that Jesus is like, you know, like holding our face in those moments when we are suffering. And he's like, I know, like, just stop and pause mm -hmm. and be okay. You're like, it is okay to fall apart and it is okay to cry. And it is okay to just lay on the couch and not get dinner started or, um, ask for help or call on a friend and say, I cannot get up off the couch right now because I'm in pain or I have a migraine. Can you pick up my kids at school? I mean, just like little things like that, where you learn, at least, at least for me, learning to show myself kindness instead of my personal trainer old days of like, 
you're going to push through to the eighth rep and I'm going to be Jillian Michaels and like really mean. (laughs) And, but that just was no longer serving me that Mm -hmm. drill sergeant, pull yourself by the bootstrap. That that is so hard for me to see in you, Kristen. Like I (laughs) do not get that vibe from you at all. Like I'm just like, you're so it. like chill and like, you know, it's just so funny. But I love it. Thank you for sharing that. Cause that's, I totally agree with that. 100%. That's, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. That's you girls, brought you some- know, it takes, it, oh, you know, ahead, it takes Ash. strength to, you know, it takes strength to like push hard and go hard every day. But I feel what takes real strength is for us to set boundaries with our bodies, to pay attention and listen to ourselves, to slow down, like, if it like if you can relate to a lot of us we are go 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 like we want to get stuff done we want to do the most we want to multitask and so for me to slow down and actually listen to my body educate myself about real health and what it takes to live a healthy life without you know this and that and the other like that takes true strength so like for all the moms who feel guilty for taking a nap or taking care of themselves like yeah. That is true strength to honor yourself, honor your body, care for yourself. Like that's Amen. legit. Amen. Mom, mom guilt, mom guilt is stupid, y'all. We're yeah. all actively, completely, Basically. totally campaigning against it. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. no mom guilt. Yes. Crap. A liar. <laughs> you girls brought some awesome stuff to the table with everything that you just shared. Oh my gosh. There was stuff in all of it. I let Katie may. So I did a podcast episode on toxic positivity. And basically I was like, look, it's okay to feel your feelings. Mm -hmm. Like toxic positivity is this like false reality that everything has to be sunshine and rainbows all the time. Right. Right. Every second. Mm -hmm. And especially, which I call myself a realistic optimist. And I think that all of you (laughs) girls are the same. And like, we have this tendency to veer towards toxic positivity. We do. And so being like conscious and aware of like, Hey, slow down. Like it's okay to feel my feelings and deal with that. And then recognize we don't have to stay in that place, but it is okay Mm. to feel your feelings. That's okay. And Ashley, Mm. you know, you were talking about like trials to testimony, right? The hard things that we walk through, like purpose and the pain. So good. And Mm -hmm. Kristen leaning in on Jesus. And I always find great comfort in knowing that Jesus, his time here on earth, that he felt so many of the things that we feel right? Mm -hmm. Even down to the physical pain he felt on the cross, but he felt, he felt anger. He felt, um, grief. He felt frustration, right? All these things. Mm -hmm. And so that, that level of empathy is like crazy to think about that. Jesus knows like, and, and the good father, like the one who created you loves you and he cares like, and he hurts when you hurt, like when our kids are hurting, we hurt, right? Because our kids are a piece of who we are we're a piece of our, our father. And so just to know that like, he's holding us and that he hurts when we hurt. And I just find great comfort in that. And then also everything you girls were talking about where, um, just being aware of our need for our personal health. So with my coaching gals, one thing I like to, um, coach with them around is something I call the priorities funnel. And so the short version is it's like, God is first, like knowing, fearing, revering, honoring him, pointing others towards him, growing in relationship with him. The very second thing is personal health. It's your mental, physical, spiritual, emotional health. Because if mama goes down, girl, Mm -hmm. I I mean, the whole ship going down, (laughs) the whole thing going down and going down quick. Right. So just being aware that, Hey, yes, I am not all about this buzzword self-care where you abandon your kids and you go take a five hour bubble bath and drink wine. Like I'm not about that, but I am about the awareness and like knowing like, Hey, if I don't get a 30 minute nap in, or like, I don't take a 10 minute walk, like I'm going down and like the whole ship's going to sink. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think having that awareness of what you need and what your body needs to stay functioning, right. To be able to, to be an experience and serve in the way that God has called you to serve your family, your mission field in all the places. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, and yeah. Yeah. Your point, you, you won't, you won't need that five hour break if you are properly taking care of yourself on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Secondly, I don't shame anyone for taking a five hour break. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Whatever fills your cup is what do you got to do. Like, yeah. Rollerblade. I- yeah. Graffiti on I some, I, I don't know, graffiti. canvases, like, yeah, I don't know where that came from, honestly. but like, you know, but it's regular whatever, there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I think we believe this narrative that self care has to look like going to get your nails done, going to get a massage, you know, taking a nap. And like when you're going through something, especially like I mean, in general, long term burnout for moms is real. Like if it's chronic pain that you're dealing with, like you can't. I just talked about this where you can't expect like just to spray a little self care. Like you have a Mister Body, like take a nap. Oh, I should feel great now, right? Like mm -hmm. no, like you've been burnt out for so long. You've been trying like yourself for so long. It takes, it's a journey to get back to a place where you feel like, okay. And it's continuous. Like you don't just like water a plant and be like, all right, good <laughs> luck. Like, hope you're good. Hope you're never thirsty again. Like, no, you have to continuously take care of it. It's the same with us. Like we can't just be like, oh, I went and got my nails done last month. I'm Why good. do I feel like crap right now? Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, I hate getting my nails done. I hate sitting down. I hate being inside. And I used to do that because I, I thought that that's like what people did when they like, you know, my husband was like, I got the kids go do something nice for yourself. And so I'm like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go get my nails done. I hated it y'all. So I would come back from that feeling even more drained. And like, what did I just do for the past three hours? Like all the things that I hate. And so now it's like, no, like do what you need to do that actually is going to bring yourself joy, give yourself energy, fill you up. Like if it's, a nap every day of the week because you are so far depleted from sleep girl do it like whatever you know like well, don't let Amy tell you uh, <laughs> take, take the bubble bath to Katie's point and I think we hit on this too is like knowing your limitations it starts there right like mm -hmm. knowing and being okay with your limitations like we are not robots and mm -hmm. that was so important because you can't ask for help if you don't know your own limitations if you don't accept your own limitations and then you're not showing up as your best self, right? Mm -hmm. Like Jesus himself was surrounded by disciples all the time. Mm -hmm. Whatever message, generational BS crap that we're carrying through that we need to just pull through, do all this stuff alone is a flat out lie. Like we have to just mm -hmm. address that right now. So I think no matter what you're going day to day, chronic pain, like you cannot do it alone. We were not designed to do it alone we shouldn't expect ourselves to do it alone. And you have to be clear about your own limitations in order to properly care for yourself and get the help you need. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. That acceptance yeah. piece too, of you can only do so much. That's a hard mm -hmm. one. Yeah. It still is a hard one for me. I, I like for me, I don't like being a bother. So even to this day, that, that, um, internal voice. Whenever we mm -hmm. go, my husband and I go out to eat and I have to be the one that's like, oh, can I eat there? Like, is it fried mm -hmm. in the same oil? It, I have to ask all those questions, which makes me want to be not ever really go out, <laughs> but learning to use my voice and accept that it's actually a loving thing for me to do, to mm -hmm. take those precautions and to stand up for myself or say, oh, I can't uh, or I not, I can't, but I choose not to do that because it's not the best for my body. And that's a whole, a whole nother rabbit trail of acceptance. Mm -hmm. and all that. <laughs> that's so good. So if you girls could choose one thing or say one thing, like one solution, what, whether it's mindset or like a practical thing that you do, or like the way, you know, your body, and then the way that you deal with that, like what one thing really empowers you to live a mostly, because again, let's kick the toxic positivity to the curb. Like no one's going to live a thriving life 100% of the time, but what one thing imp really empowers you to live a mostly thriving life through all of this? I sprung, I that, say, I sprung that one on you girls. Yeah. <laughs> I I like, do, as soon as you're like, what's one thing? I was like, oh, dang. Um, I would say like, nobody knows your body better than you. So if you feel like you have something wrong going on and you feel like when you're seeking professionals, just because they're professionals, they, it's not their body, you know, your body better than anyone else. And so if you're continuously feeling like something is not right, then you need to keep seeking somebody who will hear you. Because I think that it is so easy to get discouraged. And to feel like, well, they know more, so I should trust them. But you were given an intuition. You were given this feeling for a reason. So don't give up. Keep seeking it out and take, 
take those warning signs, those signals seriously, because your body is super important to take care of. And, and like, just like if you pull the muscle, how impactful that impacts your daily life, like these things compound on each other when we ignore the warning signs that our body is giving us and it only gets worse. So keep on keeping on and trust your gut, trust your instinct. You know better, your body better than anybody else. And somebody will hear you. You just have to find the right person. I'll piggyback off of that because I was going to say, listen, learn to listen to your body. And you had already mentioned that Ashley of just tuning into your intuition and, um, and learning to read cues. Like, do I feel Mm -hmm. after I eat this, do I, Mm -hmm. and stop ignoring all of the signs Mm -hmm. that your body is giving you. Um, if you keep drinking that diet Coke and you're like, I don't know why I have no energy at five o'clock in the afternoon, but (laughs) I'll just drink but it. This out is normal. I'll just drink it out. <laughs> it's just a continual like smushing down your body's messages to you. So, so as to answer that question of how do you live a thriving life? When I stop listening to what my body is trying to communicate, it will get louder and louder until it makes me stop. Mm-hmm. And that's when I get sick. That's when mm-hmm. um, more things pop up that I'm like, what the heck is that? And mm-hmm. so that's that to me is the key to thriving is really honoring that the Lord gave us our bodies. It is our temple. It is an an avenue that we can lean in and really learn more about ourselves and who he is. And when we ignore the messages, then it's just snuffing that out and, and Mm -hmm. getting rid of an opportunity to grow, um, and be kind. That's mine. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. what they said they said they're all really good <laughs> and I um I a huge mindset flip for me was um instead of oh I'm really busy so I don't have time for um, me or my care it was oh I'm really busy so I have to make time for my self-care and myself, right? Because like to Ashley's point, it's not my self-care is time with the Lord because I have to set that intention and cling to him every single day. So that has to happen, especially on busy, stressful times, not, oh, he takes the back seat, right? Like he's going to be why I get through those days in a good way, right? Um, It is physical movement because if I'm not taking care of my body, if I'm not doing the right things, if I'm not exercising, if I'm not eating right, those are all essential, especially during those busy, stressful times, right? So that was a huge, a huge mindset flip is it's not, it's not a, oh, we'll see, we'll take care of everyone else. And then I'll see if I can fit in that stuff that I need. And it's like that, that has to be a flip. For everyone because you just can't you're, you're asking yourself to do something that's not human and show up as a your best version of yourself but you're neglecting yourself it's just never going to work so good mm-hmm. yeah did you want to add something i was just going to say and that stuff i work with my clients one-on-one on because it's like i'll work with them on their nutrition and their health and they're like what does this have to do with my marriage and like how are you showing up to your husband all pissy and resentful because you're stressed and unhappy, right? Like mm-hmm. all of this stuff is so interconnected. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I do that with my clients too. Like, I mean, my focus is spirit and power coaching and same thing is what does health have to do with that? Everything, everything, everything <laughs> it is yeah. all connected. <laughs> yes. So amen to that. Yeah. It's definitely mm-hmm. a foundational piece priorities and choices. You're exactly right. Katie may we, so we had something come up within our family that we're going to be gone next week and we're going to be gone for a full week. And, you know, so I'm like rearranging the schedule and I like, we're making it work. You know, something came up. I just figured out how to take an entire week off from all of our other things to make space for this week of time that we need to be available for this other thing. So, you know, it's like, I was like, I was kind of amazed. I was like, wow. Like when it's a priority and we make the choices around that, like we can find the time. If it's truly a priority, if it's truly something that's important Mm -hmm. to us, that really needs to happen in our life. We'll find the time. We'll make the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Girls, as, as always, as usual, this has been such an awesome and insightful conversation. I want to close this out today with a piece of scripture from second Corinthians 12 verses nine and 10. 
But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses in insults in hardships and persecutions and difficulties for when I am weak, then I am strong. So good. Mm -hmm. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us for another Moms in the Middle Talk. And we cannot wait to see you on the next one.